was on a roll this year. Yeah, they were. I mean, Undertaker returned looking better than ever. Yeah. Uh, Seth Rollins becoming a double champion. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Uh, breakout matches from guys like Kevin Owens and Cesaro. I mean, that, the height of NXT. Exactly. But then they had to go and do something like oh. <clears throat> put the championship on Roman Reigns. Which I thought was like, eh. And then they made it worse by putting the championship on Sheamus approximately five minutes later. They had to go and do something like Survivor Series. <laughs> this is the time of year where I'm thankful that Survivor Series Thanksgiving kind of... I see what happened there. See what I did there? Yep. Where I'm thankful for... The other people I can watch that aren't WWE, the guys like Pro Wrestling Guerrilla, Combat Zone Wrestling, and Ring of Honor. People I can watch and say, you know what? Even their bullshit storylines are better than Sheamus being the WWE <laughs> Champion. Because most of the time, they don't have bullshit storylines. They just have good wrestling. Independent wrestling. This is the indie news. If you're not standing up and clapping, you should be. Because <laughs> that was a fantastic intro. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right, I do believe we have, uh, you got three shows. I got three, technically four. Oh, that's right. There was the, uh, the, the <laughs> tournament two. for tomorrow, yeah. night one yeah. and two. All right, let's kick it off. What do we do? Kick it off. I went through puberty. I'm a man now. Woohoo! You totally chimmeled that bitch. The rated R superstar. Let's talk about some results. <laughs> nope. Uh, Alright, we're done. We'll see you guys later. On Friday the 27th, we had Absolute Intense Wrestling Presents Hell on Earth 11 Hell, yeah. from Cleveland, Ohio, where we had some shit go down. Lewis Linden defeated Alex Shelley. <coughs> Gregory Iron successfully, wow. <coughs> He's dying, ladies and gentlemen. Just nope. Just keep going. Ignoring. With it. Ignore the death. <laughs> Ignore, Ignore the death. death. Read some more results. Yeah. Gregory Iron successfully defended the intense championship against former champion Davy Vega. Candice LeRae won a four-way match, including Alex Daniels, Johnny Gargano, and DJ Z. Wow. Uh, Eddie Kingston defeated Josh Prohibition with a low blow, which was the same means in which Eddie Kingston defeated Josh Prohibition last time he won. So this time, Prohibition challenged him to a two out of three falls match, basically a uh, three stages of hell match, Oh, where it will be a regular wrestling match, a street fight, and a last man standing match. All right. Or something of that nature, I think. That'll be fun. I'm into that. I didn't write it down. Uh, and then we had Dak Dactor. Dr. Daniel C. Rockingham defeat Brian Carson, Frankie Flynn, Heidi Loveless, Rex Brody, and the returning Cloudy oh, in a six-way scramble match. Uh, then we had Team 2 Infinity successfully defend the Tag Team Championships against Hot Sauce Entertainment and the team of Flip Kendrick and Eric Ryan. Uh, Tim Donst defeated Chris Hero via submission. Wow. Dick Justice defeated Jock Sampson via disqualification. All right. And in the main event... Ethan Page defeated Ricky Shane Page for the Absolute Championship after shooting a fireball into Ricky Shane Page's face while the referee was down. Where you get the fireball, bro? But this does make Ethan Page both AIW Absolute Champion and the AAW Champion. Wow. And then the next day, Saturday the 28th, we had AAW's Windy City Classic yeah. from Chicago, where Colt Cabana does a podcast. podcast. Uh, Check out this week's. It's got Bobby Roode. It's, good. it's cool. You cool. mean Bobby Roode? Yeah. That, that's actually how they intro it. Good. <laughs> uh, Windy City Classic 11, just to pair off with Hell on Earth, 11. Ooh. These guys are 11-ing together. 11-11. Mm. Uh, Make a wish. The opener... Tommaso Ciampa defeated Phoenix. Yeah. Uh, Matt Crane and... No, Marcus Crane and Shane Hollister defeated Matt Cage and Tyson Ducks. Uh, 
Alright. Uh, Kongo Kong won a six-pack scramble match against Brett Gakia, CJ Esparza, Buck Nasty, Connor Braxton, and Marion Fontaine. Oh, I left that part out, too. After Jock Sampson attacked Dick Justice with a cowbell, causing the disqualification, Dick Justice was saved by Marion Fontaine. Wow. Uh, Marion Fontaine is a gentleman. He is. Uh, Davey Vega defeated ACH. The Hooligans defeated Ohio is for Killers in Jake Christ's farewell match with Ohio is for Killers' own finishing double team maneuver. Wow. And they're the still, I think, the current a AEW Tag Team Champions. Uh, Lewis Linden successfully defended the Heritage Championship against Alex Shelley. This puts Linden over Shelley two for two this weekend. Uh, Gregory Iron defeated Christian Faith, and then the rest of the Iron Curtain came out and attacked Christian Faith, and they unmasked Christian Faith, revealing that he is indeed the former AIW Absolute Champion, Ricky Shane Page. <clears throat> then we had Chris Hero defeat Pentagon with wow. the Death Blow Elbow. Nice. And then in the main event, we had a three-weight elimination match in which the first elimination came when Ethan Page eliminated Trevor Lee. Ooh. But the final fall goes to the new AAW champion, Eddie Kingston, after deliver... He delivered not one, not two, not three, but four backfists. Overkill, King. Damn. Four backfists to... And the title reign of Ethan Page. Wow. So Ethan Page only got to be the double champion for about 24 hours. Hey, but he was still a double champion. And then only moments after his title victory, Eddie Kingston got kicked in the face by the pro wrestling death machine, Sammy Callahan. Not only that, but Sammy Callahan would go on to win the Squared Circle Wrestling Championship, I believe, today or yesterday, depending on your own. Sunday. Uh, he ended up winning the championship. So, already back on the indies, yes. winning championships. I have a feeling that when Jake Crist officially retires, Sammy Callahan might go back to Ohio as for killers. Fill the void. Fill the void. Uh, also... Speaking of back on the indies, uh, why can't I remember his name all of a sudden? <laughs> he out of WWE and erased out of my mind. Uh, oh, Brad Maddox. Brad Maddox, Turkey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I said. Brad Turkey. Maddox is taking yeah, bookings. he's taking bookings. Uh, you can uh, check out uh, Brad Maddox bookings at yahoo.com. Yeah, so we got two guys. Ex WWE on the Indies, yeah. both talented, both Indeed. cool looking, in their own ways. Yeah. And then also happening on the twenty eighth, we had night one of tournament for tomorrow at Fet Music Hall in Providence, Rhode Island. Beyond Wrestling. By Beyond Wrestling. Find them at lugmanofans.com. Down in the description. Uh, we opened up with Donovan Dijak. Banana hands. Defeating J T Dunn. We had in the Clash of Styles Matt Tremont. Defeated Jonathan Gresham. There was no AJ in that. Nope. Uh, we had Team Tremendous defeat the Throwbacks, Nasher Hatfield, and Mr. Touchdown. Wow. And then we had Eric Spicely defeat Chuck O'Neill in that match that had Matt Riddle as the special guest referee. Oh, yeah, that MMA guy. Yeah. Uh, and then we had the singles brackets where Brian Fury defeated Darius Carter, Hot Sauce Tracy Williams, and Jay Freddy. Leo Rush defeated Travis Air Gordon, uh, Charade, and Devin Blaze. We had Ryan Galeone defeat Black Baron, Rex Lawless, and TJ Marconi. And then we had David Starr defeat Francis Kip Stevens, Pinky Sanchez, and Tommy Trainwreck. So mm. those four winners will, on night two, face each other in a four-way match. All right. Another four-way match. It's a big four tournament that's fitting because it's tournament four tomorrow four. Hey. So everything's in fours. In the tag team brackets... We had the Hit Squad defeat the Devastation Corporation, the Viking War Party, and the Beaver Boys. We had the Doom Patrol defeat Scumbag Nation, the Amazing Gulaks, and Dub Boys. Uh, 
Was that a uh, Dickinson and Jaka? Yes. And then we had EYFBO defeat the Gentlemen's Club, Massage NV, and the Submission Squad. Hmm. And then we had the team of Kimberly and Shinron defeat the team of Mike Grocco and Smiley, the team of Milk Chocolate, and the Hoods. Kimron? So, what I noticed here is they had a good dichotomy going into night two. Because Kimberly, Shinron, and the Hit Squad have all been on the opposing side of Team Pazuzu. Ah. Which, four out of five members of Team Pazuzu are the Doom Patrol and EYFBO. So you had Ooh. the rivaling factions on both sides of this Four Corners tag match going into the finals. That's fantastic. Yeah, good hype up. Good storytelling. Yes. Like on night two, which was the day that we're recording this on Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Uh, but probably t yesterday, for you people watching. Yes. Uh, we had Donovan Dijak defeat Chris Hero. Mm -hmm. We had the first of finals, where Brian Fury defeated Ryan Gallion, Leo Rush, and David Starr to be the tournament for tomorrow singles champion. Good job, Brian Fury. And then we had the Hit Squad defeat EYFBO, the Doom Patrol, and Kimberly and Shinron. Kimron. To win the tag team bracket nice. of the tournament of For Tomorrow 4. Tomorrow, For Tomorrow, For Tomorrow. <laughs> um, then we had Jonathan Gresham in a four quarters match defeat the Black Baron, Charade, and Moose. Moose. Uh, I just want to talk about right now how much I want to see. Jonathan Gresham versus Moose one on one like at Ring of Honor. It's so weird. That's such a weird pairing. Jonathan Gresham is so small. Yeah, Moose, Moose is so big. big. <laughs> but they're both super athletic and talented. Indeed. And, uh, the Gentlemen's Club in three on three action defeated the Viking War Party, <laughs> to which uh, Chuck Taylor. Uh, posted a tweet about this that said, Holy shit, the Gentleman's Club won a match. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's one I know you'll enjoy, except for maybe the outcome, because the team of Stockade and Matt Tremont defeated the Throwbacks, Dasher Hatfield and Sugar Dunkerton. What? Sugar Dunkerton came back for, yeah. for a second. Uh, Anthony Stone defeated Mr. Touchdown. Uh, Matt Riddle, Chuck O'Neill, and Eric Spicely defeated the amazing Gulex and Tracy Williams in a six-man tag. And in the main event, the Crusade for Change defeated Team Tremendous, Super Cop Dick Justice, and Officer Colt Cabana. Boom, boom. Post-match, they did announce that in December they will host the very last Beyond Wrestling show from Fet Music Hall. Oh, wow. Uh, but they do insist that Beyond Wrestling will go on. They just have to find a new venue. New venue in the near future for Beyond Wrestling. That's all I have for results. I hope your ears are still on. Yeah. Because now he's going to talk about Ring of Honor, what happened on Saturday, which will happen again on Wednesday. So if you don't want to know what's going to happen on Wednesday, you should click to the time below. So it's down here. I don't spoil nothing for you. Because... I'm about to spoil a lot of stuff. We're getting close to Final Battle. A lot of stuff going on, so if you're still listening right now, it's your, it's your fault. Thanks. Thanks for helping that. Uh, we open up with Will Ferrara defeating Adam Page in a very good back-and-forth match. Uh, Will Ferrara would win after Colby Carino would distract the referee. BJ Whitmer would try to throw his crutch to Adam Page, which would be caught by Will Ferrara, who would blast Adam Page in the face with it and pick up the win. Uh, See, cheaters never prosper. BJ and Colby okay. would get in and help a, uh, Adam Page beat down uh, hey, hey. Will Ferrara. Uh, the Decade would then get run off by Mark Briscoe, who was out of commentary. Uh, he's been getting in, getting in fights with BJ Whitmer. Now, the, this is uh, Adam Page was pissed off because... Well, the they had the whole thing with uh, Jay Briscoe and Adam Page and the whole... Oh, I don't exactly. Know who the fuck you are. You know, a Adam Page was pissed off because the Decade has been... Uh, Nigel McGuinness has banned them from Final Battle. Yeah. I think what this is possibly going to be, because B.J. Whitmer is, can wrestle, he's cleared to wrestle, I think we're going to get Paige and Whitmer versus the Briscoes at Final Battle. Not sure yet. We'll find out. To me, it's a shitty consolation for Whitmer versus Carino. 
Yeah, what are you going to do? Whine. Well. I'm going to whine. Blame. I just friended Nigel McGinnis on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> like, two hours ago. Nice. So I'm going to fucking whine. <laughs> well, he's just going to tell you that it's Carino's fault because Carino's the one that's hurt and can't wrestle. No, you know what? Blame blame Paul Heyman. Maybe it's ECW's fault. Hey, there you go. So it's all Paul Heyman's fault. Uh, we had Jack Victory. There. <laughs> what a dick. Uh, we had Kevin Kelly interview uh, the Addiction, who are still pissed off that they have not received uh, a fair rematch for their tag team championships. Saying that you know when the KRD member got That's involved. Fair. The match should have been stopped, blah, blah, blah. So they are going to go to New Japan instead. They're not going to wrestle with Ring of Honor. And once they uh, once they take down and just run over the entire heavyweight tag league in New Japan, they're going to come back and reclaim their ROH World Tag Team Championships of, of the world. world. I'd be interested in seeing that. Hey, a lot of good talent over there that... Uh... Japan. Yeah, that, that, that Japan. Yeah, that place. That uh, that that country. Uh, holy Taylor Hendricks. And a promo from Jay Lethal. Yeah. She looked hot. It was ridiculous. Well, uh, she doesn't often not look hot. That's true. But, god damn that dress. Holy shit. It, I won't be able to find it because there's not going to be pictures online yet. But watch Ring of Honor this week if you can. If you didn't watch it last Did night. Can you show me a picture of it, though? I did, but I took I took it I took a picture off my TV. Oh, that's how good it was! It was <laughs> yeah. off the television. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, All this right, was a really really good oh, promo. Uh, Jay Lethal comes out and starts ta- you know you know congratulating Ro- Roderick Strong, saying, "Guess you know congratulations after a thousand losses to me, you finally you know figure out the combination. You finally beat me, and you're the television champion. Good for you. But now my focus is on AJ Styles." Uh, him and AJ have a fantastic promo because Jay Lethal brings up the fact that AJ has never been the ROH world champion. He's never been the ROH TV champion. And he's definitely never had both at the same time. Yeah. I, I liked, I like the dynamic they have because we have seen them in each other's faces before in TNA. And Jay Lethal. Because they were both heavily involved when Ric Flair. Mm Mm-hmm. And Jay, and Jay Lethal brings that up. He goes, everywhere we've been, I've always looked up to you. You know, wh- you know whatever company it was, if we, were to, if we were in the same company, I've always looked up to you until now. Because now that I've won both these titles and you haven't, that makes me better than you. But then, a- then he has AJ come out, face him, you know, face to face. They shake each other's hand. Really intense uh, stare down. Super well put together promo. A lot of good hype for the match. Unfortunately, there's a report that AJ is dealing with a second injury. Just a few months ago, he was dealing with a sciatic nerve. Uh, oh, you know, it was overreacting. There's a second injury that he's dealing dealing with. There's no actual. Uh, nothing's actually been announced as far as like what kind of injury it is. But being two weeks away from a final battle, that really sucks. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, a tough call, I think. Because you have to think all the people in that position, no matter who would be on any roster, yeah. if you're the guy who's supposed to go in and headline a show mm-hmm. with a match that's of the caliber of the Ring of Honor World Championship, and you're facing Jay Lethal, and you know it's going to be an awesome match, you know, every bit of the wrestler's instinct on the inside is going to say, work through it push through it, but then you take somebody like AJ Styles, who's been going for as long as he has. And he's been going for almost 20 years. Uh, you know, and a guy who plays a high-risk style, not as much as he used to, mm. uh, and he's had such a toll taken on his body already, you get that also like, hey, I should, you know, if I want my career to keep going, I should handle this injury before giving it the chance to get worse. So you really got kind of an impasse with yourself, yeah. you know, because they think, oh, doing the right thing is to go out and, you know, honor your booking, honor yeah. the commitment that you made to headline a pay-per-view. And knowing AJ Styles, I'm sure he's worked through plenty of injuries. 
So I wouldn't be surprised to see AJ go into this match regardless of the injury. But yeah, you definitely got to think with how long he's been going and how much how much of a toll that would take on him now. Uh, I'm sure there is a chance that he's second guessing it, but. It is the big show for Ring of Honor. Yeah, it's the series finale. It's, yeah. like, it's like the season finale. Yeah, it's yeah. It's this is what happens. Like WWE, their fucking weird schedule puts their biggest show of the year like in the, the first begin- quarter of the yeah. year. Yeah, it's like yeah, almost the beginning of the year. Uh, where like almost every other promotion, everything's going down at the end of the year. Yeah, like Chikara, uh, the Windy City Classic with AAW, yeah. uh, Final Battle. You yeah. know, all the big shows are the last show that you put on in the year. Yeah. Yeah. WWE does weird shit. So, but we're not talking about WWE right now. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of a thing, too. Is not only is he in the main event of the show, and it's a championship match, but also it's the big final showdown of the year. Yeah. So, so there's a lot of pressure. Yeah. Great promo. I, I hope that whatever injury he's dealing with, uh, is a, he's able to either push through it or it gets resolved before Final Battle because the hype that they put on this match, it would be a real shame if AJ Styles had to pull out of it. And then for the main event, we had Dalton Castle taking on Adam Cole, baby! Uh, Adam Cole coming out with the Kingdom, uh, and Dalton was by himself. He was facing down all four members of the Kingdom until the boys came back out, they had mass. They were ready to back up Dalton Castle. Unfortunately, they were rounded up by Silas Young and taken to the back. So Dalton Castle was left alone again. Uh, he would go against Adam Cole. Lots of interference by Bennett and Taven on the outside. As you imagine. Eventually, the referee seeing this and Dalton Castle winning by disqualification. Hey! A three-on-one beatdown would ensue. Oh. And Dalton Castle all by himself. But he would be backed up by War Machine. Hey! And Nigel McGinnis would Teddy Long that shit. Turn it into a six-man tag match. So you get the Where? Kingdom versus Warcox. <laughs> oh my god I wish I would have came up with that that is that is fantastic thank you for that that's two handshakes yes uh, yes it was Kingdom I'm, I'm versus War Cox oh my god that was fantastic uh, fucking awesome awesome match once again uh, Dalton Castle ended up interjecting himself into the Path of Resistance, the double team uh, from War Machine, where uh, eventually it's it's a backbreaker and then a gut buster by Raymond Rowe and then usually a slam that leads into a splash by Hanson. But we got the backbreaker and the gut buster by Raymond Rowe. He was past the Dalton Castle with a stalling German suplex and then got splashed on Ooh. by Hanson. Fantastic trio move. Unfortunately, the Kingdom would pick up the win when Adam Cole would go for the Destroyer, a Canadian Destroyer, which I've never seen him do, on Dalton Castle. Dalton Castle yeah, you've never work. seen him because it's like the Daytona Destroyer or whatever. <laughs> well, I've never seen the Something Daytona like Destroyer. Uh, he, uh, Dalton Castle would reverse it, and Adam Cole would end up like, he's got him uh, set up like Alabama, Alabama Slam he's style. He's for the Whirly Bird. No, uh, they, they had a name for it. I can't remember what it was. Uh, can't remember what it was. No, the, 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 I don't remember what it was. But he was, yeah, he was set, set him up for something, and Adam Cole would actually crawl over the rope so he's on the outside, oh. allowing Taven and Bennett to double super kick Dalton right in the face. They kicked him right in the fucking face, too. The replay was shame. ridiculous. His face is so pretty. <laughs> Uh, double super kick. So uh, they'd end up taking out War Machine, and that would allow Adam Cole to hit the uh, Brain Buster, I believe that is the, the Kingdom Come, and pin Dalton Castle, and the Kingdom picks up the win. Fantastic match. Uh, War Machine is getting the tag title match. See, I thought that was something different than they would do backstage with Maria. Let's well, see what you did there. I was going to try and capitalize on it, but I can't. I'm just going to ruin it. Uh, War Machine is getting the tag title match against the Kingdom at Final Battle. Uh, 
Adam Cole is set to go against Kyle O'Reilly in a grudge match. Uh, lots of stuff set up. I'll give you all the details about that. Final next battle week. usually at some point has a fight without honor. Has that been announced? That has like, not has been announced yet. Has any of them been like hyped no. up to no DQ There's, no there's two grudge matches. We've got Kyle O'Reilly versus Adam Cole, and then the YouTube exclusive, which is going to be Cheeseburger versus Brutal Bob. I have a feeling if one of them becomes a fight without honor, it'll more than likely be Cole versus O'Reilly. That would be awesome. They kick just, the shit out of each other. Just at the sound of the match, though, I would love to see it be Bennett and Taven versus War Machine. Oh, Bennett and Taven would die. If they had to face War Machine in a fight without honor? I'm just saying, like, fuck. I feel like that match would be a match of the year candidate. Even if it wouldn't be a match of the year candidate without being no disqualification. Oh, yeah. But We're to gonna... have it be with a no disqualification, I think the shit they would come up with would be, yeah, like, crazy, crazy cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, final battle, a lot of cool stuff is happening. I'll have all the details for you next week. But that is it for Ring of Honor. This week we're going to move on to a couple other news stories uh, other than AJ and Sammy Callahan coming back. A uh, couple of unfortunate stories. Uh, Matt Hardy uh, was facing Jeff Jarrett at WrestleCade over the weekend. Uh, Jeff Jarrett would do his usual spot where he hits his opponent with a guitar. Unfortunately, the guitar didn't break. Uh, leaving Hardy to get 38 stitches and one gnarly gash in his head. Yeah, I'm curious why the guitar didn't break. Uh, no clue as I'm to why. If, if, if the it, pictures, if we got the pictures, are coming up right now. Uh, I'm wondering if it was the guitar wasn't gimmicked correctly. Maybe. Or if it just was like a real guitar. I mean, fucking a. I mean, hunky Jer tongue man. Jarrett's been doing that spot for fucking years. Yeah, since the. Mid nineties. Yeah, uh, he's been doing it for twenty years. So, like, I'm thinking in my head though, like Honky Tonk Man did this once to Jake the Snake, mm -hmm. without using a prop guitar. He used an actual guitar. You think Jarrett Hardy were trying to go for a real guitar and they just fucked Maybe. it up? But the thing is, like, when it happened to Jake the Snake, Jake the Snake almost had his neck broken. Yeah. For being well, able to shit. Guitar. I mean, just. Just looking at, I mean, I showed you the pictures. Yeah. I mean, if you saw him, Matt Hardy did not walk away unscathed from this. <laughs> no. Uh, so I'm curious what happened. I'm going to put the blame on Jeff Jarrett because it's all Jarrett's fault. Jarrett is the professional guitar head buster. Yeah. No, he He's should Yeah, he should know how to get the shit out of those guitars. Uh, yeah, you really can't blame Matt Hardy because he's the one that got walloped with a fucking guitar. Yeah. So... Uh, and then also, Balls Mahoney was supposed to be at Pro Wrestling Syndicate over the weekend. Unfortunately, he was pulled out due to a car accident where a he was sideswiped by another car. Uh, he was taken to a hospital with a hip injury, but other than that, he was in stable condition. Well, so hope you get better soon, Balls. Yeah, re re rest your balls. Rest up, Balls. That's weird. Okay, uh, that's it for news stories. Balls are better now. And we're gonna move on to some up. Coming shows. Upcoming I got Monday. one match that I'm gonna talk about right. because on the fifth, which I believe is this Friday, Saturday, Saturday, uh, there is Re Ring of Honor TV tapings, the I Road to it. Road to Final Battle. Roderick Strong put out an open challenge for the television title, and it was accepted by the ROH trainer himself, Delirious. Ah. <laughs> so we will be getting. Uh, this will be on TVs eventually. Uh, I don't know if it'll be before Final Battle or a couple weeks after, but regardless, we'll get Roderick Strong versus Delirious for the TV yeah, title. And, and since like the end of last year, uh, Delirious' time on television has been very, very limited. You don't see Delirious doing very many bookings. No. You don't see him showing up on TV very often. Uh, he, but he I had mean, he was in uh, last year's Survival of the Fittest. Yes. And uh, he had uh, one match against Adam Cole, I think. And, and he did a, didn't he do a Chikara thing? He had the match at Chikara, the loser leaves Chikara match against Ultraman is Black. That's right. Right. Uh, at the season finale last year. Yeah. Uh, so uh, since then, he's really been super duper low key. Yeah, I think he's he's had some appearances since. Yeah, then, I mean he but, appeared on, but he hasn't actually wrestled when they announced the. ROH deal with New Japan. Right, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so that'll be a very fun match to see. We know Delir 
Delirious and Roderick Strong, two uh, two great workers. Uh, should be a fun match. Uh, that's that. all the upcoming stuff I got until next week when I got Final Battle. But I know you got some upcoming shows yeah. this weekend. I got two more shows for the fifth. Ah, oh, shit. Because we're going to have AIW in Brooklyn, Ohio, presenting No Sleep Till Brooklyn. Damn. And this is where they're going to be Damn. filming uh, a lot of uh, footage for the Wrestling Road Diaries 3, Money Equals Funny. Or Funny Equals Funny. Money. Funny Equals Money. Uh, Grado, Boom Boom, Colt Cabana, and Kikutaro. Yeah, um, so we're going to have Cliff Compton, another Wrestling hey. Road Diaries veteran. Dose. Uh, he's going to take on Frankie Flynn. We're going to have M Dog 20, Matt Cross versus Alex Daniels. We're going to have Kaplan taking on Brian Carson. We're going to have Weird World taking on Joshua Singh and Dr. Daniel C. Rockingham. And then we're going to have Tracy Smothers of the FBI versus Gredo. Be that match is going to be hilarious. And the main event set to be Kikataro versus Colt Cabana. Boom, boom. Kikataro. But, you know what? If you're not going to be getting yourself filmed for the Wrestling Road Diaries 3, you might as well be in the 2300 Arena in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for Chikara's... Chikara! Top Banana, their season, season finale. Hey, this is, what, season 15? Yeah, I think so. Something like that. It's, I mean, they've been going on for yeah. a, quite a while. 2002. We I love think. us some Chikara. We do. We're in maybe perhaps planning stages of actually being live at Chikara next year. Game of Game of So, I mean, Best get ready. ever. There could very well be some live broadcasting coming Whoa. from King of Trios. If you remember, we did a couple live broadcasting moments from WrestleMania. WrestleMania. They didn't get posted live. No, because we did the Wi-Fi sucked at Levi Stadium. Yeah, well, it was a newer And newer so did event. my fucking... I couldn't even get 4G in Levi Stadium. There was like 80,000 of us there, so there was probably a lot of people in there. Fucking a lot of people place. taking some Gs. <laughs> uh, but alright, let's talk about the lineup. Because we're going to have a match that's recently announced. There's a trios match in the making. We're talking Argus, Ophidian, and Shinron, collectively known as the Snake Pit. Hell yeah. Taking I'm on... Not wearing my snake pit shirt. Snowflake, Missile Assault Man, and Lucas Calhoun, collectively known as Kevin Condren, presents Battleborn. Yeah, because Kevin Condren is Snowflake. Yes. Uh, we have two interesting one-on-one -on -one matches Ooh. coming up. We have the implosion of the Nightmare Warriors as Silver Ant is trying to reclaim his identity. He goes one-on-one -on -one against Frightmare. Wow. What, what was the catalyst for this? I have no clue. Uh, wow. Other than maybe I'm keeping my fingers crossed they're going to try and reform the colony. Well, did, yeah, didn't, didn't Silver Ant go against Fire Ant at one of the last shows? Yes. I think so, at the last show. So, may, so maybe maybe Fire Ant got to him? Uh, yes. No, yeah, because Fire Ant won by count-up because I think Silver Ant left during the match. Oh. Uh, something of that nature. Um, Come back, Silver Ant. Speaking of Fire Ant, though. Oh. The Colony made their Chikara debut in 2006. All right. Since then, Fire Ant and Soldier Ant have never once gone one on one in the entire history of the colony's existence in Chikara until this upcoming Saturday. Oh, whoa. A match seven years in the making? Something of that nature? Wow. Seven or eight years in the making? I don't know. But Fire Ant goes one on one with a soldier ant. That's, that's going to be intense because the, the whole thing with soldier ant has just been a really intense storyline since. Yeah. You know, being being t you know taken as a prisoner of war, and then having the whole identity crisis, and now being part of the BDK, and yeah. not being part of the BDK, and just so much he's gone through so much stuff, and yeah. then also feeling betrayed when Worker Ant joined the colony. Yeah. So, then we're gonna have some typical Jakara's trios action. We love us some trios action because we're on the last leg of the Chuck Taylor retirement tour, ah, and yes. we're gonna have 
Chuck Taylor, Orange Cassidy, and Drew Gulak versus Oberian, Kodama, and Cobalt. We're going to have the Gentleman's Club versus the Batiri. Show off them Chucky T's. Should be fun. Yeah. Uh, then we've got the finals, the final match in the Challenge of the Immortals tournament, the Double Round Robin 90 match tournament. We're it's currently tied, to, right? Uh, no, it's just the two top teams. It's actually... Crown and Court with 11 points, and the Wrecking Crew with 12 points. Okay. Uh, as far as I, my math is, if my math is correct, uh, the winners, each winner is presented with three point medallions that they can cash in for basically whatever they want, as long as points are involved. Uh, Crown and Court, Los Ice Creams, Jervis Cottonbelly, and Princess Kimberly versus the Wrecking Crew. That's Jaka, Flex Rumble Crunch. Blaster McMassive and Max Smash Master uh, going to be intense. It's probably going to be one of the few times you'll see those ice creams put on their war faces. That's scary. Maybe mint chocolate chip. That's <laughs> when when those ice creams wear mint chocolate chip, you know shit's about to go down. And then we've got the Cybernetico, another yearly tradition. Yeah, this is one cool. I love. If I couldn't get to a King of Trios weekend, I'd love to go to whatever show at the end of the year that has the Cybernetico. Because the Cybernetico is probably my favorite yearly Chikara match that's it's, not King of Trios. It's, it's a very fun match to watch. It's because... eight versus eight, cycle style, tagging in and out. Yeah. Only one person out of the 16 can win. That's an overlooked fact a lot of the times. Yeah. Because most of the time, you get down to two or three against one, and the one guy will win. Yeah. Or one on one from opposing teams, mm -hmm. and one person wins. But you have to realize there's been two times, I think, that you have more than one winner on one side. One team's been completely eliminated, but the people remaining from the winning team also have to fight each other until there's only one winner. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's not it's it's a team effort until the other team is gone. Yeah, and then it's every man for himself or woman or a creature because there's a lot of them in Chikara. Yes, absolutely, and we have two squads of eight. The first squad is being led by Juan Francisco de Coronado. That's a really good impression. I don't like that you do that so well. It's kind of annoying. Uh, Boo! I, I will. Admit right now that whenever I see him do a promo, I say his name along with him, and I think that's why. Lots of it, practice. It goes along in with it, but we're gonna have him, and he's picked seven people from around the globe. He's got the proletariat boar of Moldova, Prakash Sabar, Mister Azerbaijan, Jakob Hammermeyer, Pinky Sanchez making his Chikara debut. He's got Wali. And then, finally, Mr. Touchdown, Mark Angelo Seti from America. America! Fuck yeah. But he's taking on the squad led by the old-timey king of swing, Dasher Hatfield. And Dasher Hatfield has assembled himself a crew that's not light on the talent either. Oh, hell. Because his first draft pick was the young Lions Cup champion, Heidi Loveless. His draft picks two and three, the Campeonatos de Parejas, Team NRG. That's three. And then the Cibernetico captain from last year, Worker Ant of oh. the Colony. He ain't left out of the finale this year. And then we have Oleg the Usurper. And we have the Funky Pharaoh of Mosses. Hell yeah. And the Farmer Frog, Ooh. all joining up with Dasher Hatfield to take on Juan Francisco's crew. So we, he's got an ant, he's got a pharaoh, he's got a viking, he's got a frog. They're taking on a boar and a, an Azerbaijan. an Azerbaijani guy and a, a football player and a Pinky Sanchez <laughs> and a Jacob. Yes, and a Jacob. But, all fun and games aside, this we're going to be... This is big. Taken out on the grand finale with probably one of the biggest matches in Chikara history. I'm going to say probably one of the biggest matches since 
the inception of the Grand Championship. Michael Sin Quackenbush versus Eddie Kingston. Yeah, so, yeah. since Quackenbush Kingston, like, there's been some big matches. You've had Kingston and Icarus. You've Twice. Had, you've had Icarus and Decalion. Yeah. You know, you've, you've had some big matches, but this triple threat match is so big in Chikara history. We're talking three Gen 1 originals. Hollow Wicked defends the Grand Championship against former champions Icarus and Eddie Kingston. So this is all three the guys. The only three Grand Champions in Chikara history all battling for the belt. Yeah, so, I mean, no matter what, the winner makes history. Because if Hollow Wicked wins, he will be the winner of the first ever Triple Threat Grand Championship match in history. One and of the first ever Triple Threat matches in Chikara. Triple Threat matches don't happen very often in Chikara. And he can, he can say that, at the same time, he beat both former Grand Champions. Yeah. And then, if either Eddie Kingston or Icarus win... They'll become the first ever two-time Grand Champions in Chikara There's a lot on the line in this match. So there's a lot of history going on here. A lot of people are equating it to their version of WWE's Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, Triple H, Hell in a Cell moment at uh, WrestleMania. Yeah. The end of an era. But this is like the culmination of the era of Eddie Kingston, Icarus, Hollow Wicked, having these three guys who have been so pivotal in the history of Chikara... When you, and you gotta, Facing off against each other. Well, you gotta think, and there's so much history here because you've had the feud since Icarus took the belt off of Kingston. They've been at odds. You've gotta think, there's the tag team history between Icarus and Hollow Wicked. From way back in the day. And, I mean, Eddie Kingston hates anyone who's got the belt. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't think there's any love loss between him and Hollow Wicked either. So, there's so much that goes into this match. I am so excited to see this. This is going to be a fantastic match. Yeah. Uh, so that's what's going to happen on Saturday the 5th, along with what I already said, No Sleep Till Brooklyn from AIW, and Roderick Strong versus Delirious going on for Ring of Honor. It's a big day. It's going to be fun. That's my upcoming events. Next week, however, we're going to have a lot more upcoming events. We're going to have Shine 31. We're going to have PWG's All-Star Weekend. And we're also going to have CZW's Cage of Death. That's scurry. And I will have a full card heading into Final Battle. So don't forget to like and favorite and subscribe if you haven't already done all three of those. And click all the links in the description, especially the ones at the top, because they are the links to all the peeps we just got done talking about. Yeah, all the websites for our favorite wrestling promotions like ProWrestlingGorilla.com, ChikaraPro.com, LookMonoFans.com, ROHWrestling.com, and a lot more. And speaking of a lot more, there's a lot more links. Like our links. The links to all our social media shit. And thank you to all those people that have been clicking those links, liking the videos, sharing the videos on Tumblr, on Facebook, on Twitter. Retweeting. Thanks for all the likes on, we've been doing. Just regular tweeting. We've been doing the Instagram pics. We've got Man Crush Monday. we got Tag Team Tuesday. Tuesday, we got Woman Crush Wednesday, we got Throwback, Throwback Thursday, Throwback Thursday, and Finisher Finish Friday. Yeah, all that stuff. Check out. You can check out my Facebook. You can check out our Instagram, and you can check out my Twitter. All three uh, Twitters. All three of us have yeah. twi Twitter machines. Yeah, uh, and there's two emails down there. If you got questions, you can email all of us at fanstockwrestling at gmail.com. Or if you want to talk to this guy right over here. He's got Kevin underscore Hawk 636 at Hotmail.com. Because I still use Hotmail. And below that, for those of you watching on YouTube, check out the podcast on SoundCloud.com slash Wrestling Rundown. Uh, for those of you listening to the podcast, thank you very much. Check us out on YouTube, YouTube.com slash The Wrestling Rundown, so you can see all the cool pictures and stuff that we post along with the videos. Absolutely. And don't forget to look at the playlist to see everything else we've encompassed this week because episode episode seventy six has been ridiculous. Yeah, because we've had Survivor Series, which was shitty. We've had the Raw from whatever fucking world that was. The from. fifth dimensional Raw that was absolutely bizarre land. Uh, we had a tag team or tag team title and women's title defense on NXT. Action packed NXT. We had the Thanksgiving edition of SmackDown, which had a great main event. And then we have this indie news. Thank you for everyone that's been watching. Chocks full of stuff. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for reblogging. 
Thanks for liking. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next. Most likely, episode 77. That's a good place to start. Unless you want to start at 1. Nobody wants to start at 1. Nobody puts 1 on the corner. 1 is the loneliest number. <laughs> <laughs>